The word gospel translates to news that brings joy. But this isn't just any news. A gospel is news that changes a life forever. After being invaded and enslaved by Persia, Greece won two decisive battles at Marathon and Solus. The Greeks sent out heralds, also called evangelists, to proclaim the good news to the cities. We have fought for you. We have won. And now, you're no longer slaves. You're free. The reality is that we are all slaves. Slaves to sin and slaves to death. We are slaves in need of good news. Enter Jesus, God's Son, fully God, fully man, bringing news that would change our lives forever. His news was this, I am the divine, come to you to do what you could not do for yourself. I will take what you deserve so you can have what I deserve. You have no idea how much it will cost me, but you also cannot imagine the depths of my love for you. It is a gift that I give freely. So repent. Repent from all the ways you run from me and follow me. Follow me because I am the only way to eternal life. Follow me because I am the Savior you've been looking for. Follow me because I have authority over everything, yet I have humbled myself for you. Follow me because I died on a cross for you. Because I am your true love and your true life. This is my good news for you. This is my gospel. That you have been saved by grace, and that you are slaves no more. Amen. And that is why we are here uh, today to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. To this whole entire world, so we just want to welcome all of you today that are tuning in, that are viewing this live uh, cast as we are in this crazy time of, of coronavirus and quarantining and, and uh, all these regulations, but we're going to continue to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. So uh, with this setting today, we're, we, we've got a small ministry team here. Just for you, uh, we, all of you today, Harvard Hope Church family, we love you, we miss you, we miss you being here at this church building, but let me just say this to everybody that's viewing today, you can never cancel church. This is a building that the church gathers in for worship, encouragement, the word of God, to get ready, to go out into the world, our mission field, to be the hands and feet of Jesus. So you can never cancel church because we are the church, amen? So just be encouraged by that today. Though we're not gathered in this building, hey, we're still united in Christ, and you're still the church, we're the church, and we're going to continue to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout this world. And this is the perfect atmosphere. All that's going on in the world today, this is when the church needs to rise up and, and continue to proclaim the love and, and grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. Today, I hope that you just open your, your, your home up to the presence of God. We're going to worship the Lord today here, but as you're at home, just welcome the presence of God into your homes. Amen. And I pray that you get your families together and that you can just, just say, God, here we are. May this be a habitation of your presence. We are just going to create this atmosphere where you're welcomed and, and we worship you and praise you today. So I hope and pray that's what you're doing right now. I also just want to say, hey, as we go through this together, stay focused. Us tune in to the, the Harbor Pope uh, Facebook page. There's going to be the devotions. There's going to be announcements as we go forward. Uh, you can share this today. Share the devotions. You know, this is how we're going to proclaim the gospel throughout the whole world as we do this together. So, so may God be glorified in all that we do. Uh, it's all for Him anyhow. Um, we're going to pray, and then we're just going to start worshiping the Lord, and then we're going to have a message today, and we're just going to believe God to touch everybody that's going to be viewing this today and for, for days to come. So let's all pray. Lord Jesus, we look to you today. You are our hope today. You are the reason that we got up today, Lord God. It's all about you. You died on the cross for us. 
You gave your life for us. We were the ones who sinned. We were the ones that we were the guilty party. But Jesus, you took our sin debt. <laughs> And you paid for it on the cross. The wages of sin is death. But you died on the cross for us and our place. And we're so grateful and thankful today. You rose from the dead. You are a living Savior. And today we come to say thank you. We come to worship you. And Lord, as everyone is tuning in all across the world to different various live sermons and live messages, live services where, where Facebook is being used to spread the gospel, Lord, anoint this, this, this situation that we have. Anoint it with your grace and mercy. I pray that you would take these words, this praise, saturate this world, Lord God. We believe for an awakening to come. We believe for revival to come as people start looking to you. So, Lord, do it. Lord, if there's anybody viewing this today that does not know you as their Savior, may they just call out to you, Jesus, save my soul. So, Lord God, be glorified. Edify the body now. Edify the church as we come together now to worship you. Be glorified. We love you. We praise you. And we magnify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
take it from Matthew chapter 6. God's word tells us, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow nor reap nor store away in barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Amen. And then it goes on to tell us later in that, in that chapter, and why do you worry about clothes? And so we just had to ask, why do we worry about things? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, the Lord says, not even Solomon, all his splendor is like them in the field. Amen. Amen. And going back to that verse of scripture, amen. The Bible tells us, are we not much more valuable to our Father than all of these things? Amen. So he cares for you today. Amen. There's still hope. Amen. There's still hope. Jeremiah 29 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, but plans to give you a hope and a future. And so in the middle of what we would call dark times, there's hope, amen, there's hope, amen, praise the Lord. The Bible says his uh, seed has never begged for bread, amen, we've never gone without because he said I'll supply all of your needs according to your riches and glory, amen, we have hope in Jesus, we have hope in Jesus, there at home, can you just take just a moment and say thank you Lord, thank you for hope, amen, thank you Lord, all of my hope is in you Jesus.
Beloved, this morning, our hope is in Jesus. If there's an addiction, 
or if there's uh, anything in need, we just pray, Lord, that you'll meet the needs because you said you supply our needs according to your riches and glory. Lord, we just pray that your kingdom come will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, that the forces of darkness will be driven out by your power and your love. We pray that the new creation, God's kingdom, Lord, will be done on earth and will rush in. That we'll experience victory in our lives. We'll experience peace in our lives. Lord, we thank you that we can come to you in prayer because your word says you hear us even before we ask you know what we have need of. And so, Lord, right now, even at home and here at the church, Lord, we just lift up our needs to you. We are so thankful that your word says there's nothing, nothing impossible with you. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Well, there's power in the name of Jesus. There's no other name like the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So just say that name with me. Jesus. Amen. There's peace in the name of Jesus. Lord, we love you today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give that to you. Thank you, Lord. We're the word of the beginning. One with God, the Lord most high.
says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. Peace. Amen. As you trust in Him so that you may overflow with the hope, amen, and power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What a powerful name, Jesus. We sung a lot about Jesus this morning. I have a hope in Jesus. Say the name of Jesus is coming up. But before I sing this song, I want you just to shut your eyes and whisper Jesus. Three times, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, there's nothing no sweeter than the name of Jesus. And he'll give you the peace that you need this morning. Just cry out to him and say, Jesus, I need you. Say the name of Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for all you do.
be in his presence at any time. It's up to us, right? We need, we're the ones that need to start worshiping him more, right? And lifting him up and praising him. I'm going to ask you, I hope y'all got y'all's Bibles there at home. I hope you're ready for the word because this is the atmosphere that, that we have. Uh, that's perfect for lives to be changed by the word of God. Um, if you got your Bibles, would you go to Luke chapter 6? We're going to go to the end of that chapter. And it's familiar scriptures, but we're going to go to the end of that chapter. And we're going to talk today about foundational truth. Uh, as I... As I know all pastors are, and, I, and I've seen a lot of posts going out, pray for your pastors, pray for the leaders, and yes, we need your prayers, because we've had to make a lot of tough decisions, uh, you know, pray for one another, that's how we're going to get through all this, is just praying for one another, and uh, seeking God together, and lifting Him up, uh, but we all, you know, as we come together, I think there's a lot of searching going on. A lot of people are just coming together saying, God, what? What's going on here? And you're, you're, you're seeing a lot of ministers come out and share their heart, what God's laid on their hearts. And this is all I'm doing today is just going to share with you what the Lord's put on my heart. As, as I've asked that question, God, what do people need to hear right now? What do people need to hear? So let's just pray right now. I, I just at home, grab your families, grab your hands. Let's just pray together as we go into the Word of God. Lord Jesus, thank you this morning for allowing us to worship you again. It's an honor to be in your presence. And I just, as I was worshiping you there through the songs, thinking about you, I was thinking about all the households, and it just broke me, Lord. The households that may be right now are filled with with concern and anxieties or fears, but God, I just sensed your presence. Your beautiful presence just entering into those homes and bringing you sweet peace. And that's exactly what we're praying right now, Lord. It is as your presence is there. Now this word is going to be delivered. Holy Spirit, take control. Take this word and build up the body of believers that are watching right now. And who, whoever's going to be watching this in the future, these words, may they come with such great power and anointing. And may it just be exactly what we need for this hour that we're in, Lord. And if there's anybody listening, Lord, or watching that this it does not know you as their Savior, Lord, may they experience, Lord, what we've experienced, and how you draw us, how, Lord Jesus, you convict us. Luring us away from the dangers that we've done with our decisions. And, and you lure us away from those dangers to, to your loving arms. And you, 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 you embrace us. And all we've got to do is ask for forgiveness. And you forgive us. And you cleanse us. And make us children of God. If there's anybody, Lord God, that ever watches this that does not know you, God, show them. Lord, show them how simple salvation is. That they just call upon the name of the Lord that they can be saved. So, Lord, be glorified now. Give us revelation from your word. We love you, we praise you, and we magnify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Right now at home, I want you to high-five all your family members. Amen. And we're going to get in the word now. Luke chapter 6. And this is a familiar scripture here. We're going to start reading. About, about sending out on Facebook other devotions that are going to be geared towards foundation. So please tune in for that. Verse 47 says in Luke chapter 6, it says, Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and digged deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, and the stream beat vehemently upon that house, and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. 
I love how Jesus brings things into our world, our terms. He simplifies things and he gives us illustrations just like this. He's talking about two builders, a wise builder and a foolish builder. And he said the wise builder realizes that he has to have a firm, sturdy foundation to build his house upon. So he says he goes and he digs deep. And whenever I think about this, I've seen construction sites. Maybe you've seen your home being built. And how nowadays, you know, they go out there and they get, they get these, these back hoses and they, they dig these footers. And they go down below the frost line. They build this, this big old foundation. It's just a big old ditch that, you know, I got, a, I got four corners here this morning. And can you just imagine a big, big old ditch? They call it a footer. And they put metal rebar in those footers and they pour it full of concrete. And then they pour that slab. That is the foundation people build their houses upon. That is what holds your house up during the storms and the rains and the floods. Jesus gives us this picture. But can you imagine not making a foundation like that? Just building your house upon just nothing but the ground. The first rain comes. I mean, your house is going to start creaking and cracking. Next thing you know, any wind comes along. Over time, that house is going to fall because the ground is soft. It's going to settle. That ground was not a good foundation, but you've got to dig deep and get on a rock. Look what Jesus says here. He says that whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. Now, Jesus is making a comparison here. The house that's being built, he's talking about our house, our lives on this earth. He's saying, what kind of foundation are you building? What is your life founded on? And he says here that his word is, is the foundation we need to be basing our lives upon. His word is truth today. His word is sure. If you can, you can trust his word, that is the solid rock that we need to base our, our lives upon is the word of Almighty God. He said there's two different types of people though in the world. Some people are basing their lives on the principles and the systems of the world. Some people are going to listen to the Lord's word. They're going to take heed and they're going to do it. Those people are going to be founded on truth. But notice the storms of life came to both builders. That's what I want you to recognize. Storms of life are real. We're going through one now in our country and in the whole entire world. Amen. We're going through a storm. So my question is, what is your life founded on today? And, and today, this is just the, the sort of the picture I wanted you to see. I've got, I've got these four pieces of paper here today. It's four corners. When I think about a foundation, I think about a foundation having four corners. And I just want to show you what the Lord's laid on my heart today as we talk about foundational truth that will see you through the storms of life. And we're just going to pick these up and just see what the Lord has for us as we look at this foundational truth number one. We're going, to, we're going to pick this up here and we're going to see what it says. It says, look here, all I had to really do was say Jesus. Foundational truth number one is Jesus is everything. Jesus is all you need. He is everything you need. Jesus is the core of our foundation today to get us through any storm that life might throw our way. I, I, love, I love some of these thoughts. Jesus is the Son of God. He's the humble servant, the sacrifice for our sin, the suffering Savior, the Savior of the world. Jesus is everything today. Acts 4.12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Jesus is everything. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus is everything. Jesus said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. May somebody receive that word today. Jesus is the peace that you need right now. Jesus is everything. 
Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. Connecting himself to the I am, the I am of, of back when God delivered his children out of uh, Egyptian bondage. That's all he said his name was. He says, I am. He's everything you need him to be. He's the great I am. I love that. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He's everything you need for daily living. He is the bread of life. Jesus said, I am the vine. Think about a vine and a branch. That branch will die when it's severed away from the vine. Jesus said, he is the vine. We are the branches. He is your life source today. Jesus is everything today. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Stop dwelling in darkness. Get connected to the light of the world today. Jesus said, I am the door. I love that because Jesus is your future. He is your purpose. He is the one that will direct your paths and open the doors for your future and shut the doors that need to be closed. He, you want to be in God's will, don't you? He is the door today. Jesus is everything. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Jesus is the good shepherd today. And he will comfort you. He will lead you. He will guide you. He will take care of you. Amen. Jesus is everything. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Oh, glory, hallelujah, Jesus overcome death today. Jesus is everything. You put your trust in Jesus, and guess what? Death comes knocking at your door, and you take your last breath on this earth. Though everybody on this earth will say you died because you know Jesus, guess what? You will come on up out of that grave because you have eternal life dwelling in you because you know the resurrection and the life. Jesus is everything. Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Jesus is everything. Your way, your truth, your life. He's everything you need today. He is the cornerstone. He is the sure foundation that will see you through all of life's storms. Jesus is everything. Now, 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 let's go to this corner, number two, and let's see what the Lord has for us, all right? So let's go over here. Number two, number two, this is, this is foundational truth today. Foundational truth that we're basing our lives upon, a sure, solid foundation that sees us through the storms of life. What is this one? Love God, love people. The Bible says in Matthew 22, 36 through 39, Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Jesus replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. Wow. Here at Harbor of Hope, we have a mission statement, a motto, you might say. And it, it is, we are here for a purpose of seeking God's presence, loving God's people, and fulfilling God's plans. And you know what? When I think about this and I think about, you know, a foundation, why, why would this be so critical for a foundation of getting us through the storms of life? Because a lot of times when you're in a, in a storm, all you can see is your circumstances. In other words, you lose focus. All you can see sometimes is what God is not doing. Instead of focusing on what He's already done and what He is able to do right there in the midst of your circumstance and what you can believe for Him to do in your future. And the storms, those storms come and that wind and whatever it is that's called, if it's a coronavirus, if it's self-quarantine, whatever it is, we ought to, all sometimes you can see is the storm and the wind and the rain and the fear and the anxiety and that's all you can see. But 
you see, if we if we have this truth right here, it keeps us focused. What are we doing with the storms? We continue just to seek in God and love in God with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul, all of our strength. We, we stay focused on, on helping people. Amen? Because look at our nation. Look at the world. Everybody's going through the same storm. So we've got to stay focused as we're, we're together. Hey, this is going to keep us focused. Seeking, seeking and, and loving God with all that we have in us. What does that look like, by the way? What does it look like to love God with all of your heart and all of your mind and all of your strength? What, is, what does that look like? When I think about that, I think about, I think about what we just got done doing. We just now worship the Lord. That's how I love on, on Jesus. Is when, I, when I worship Him, sometimes I'll raise my hands. Today I was on my knees and I was crying. I'm just thinking about how good he's been to me and how unworthy I am and I love him and I just call out to him and I cry out to him and I thank him for the cross. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 6, it says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not into your own understanding. Things are going to happen in your life that you're not going to understand, but it says that acknowledge him in all thy ways and he shall direct thy paths. Well, that acknowledging him in all thy ways is when you're in a situation and you don't understand it. Why, God, why? You just keep on praising him and loving him and seeking him and calling out to him. That's how we love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, everything in us. And that's what we need to do. We need to praise him in the storm, amen. Hey, right there at home, I want you to just go ahead and start clapping into the Lord. Say, hallelujah. Just praise him in the middle of the storm. In the middle of this pandemic that we're going through, just keep praising Him. Acknowledge Him in all your ways. What's it look like to love God with all of your heart? It looks like to me when people seek the Lord in prayer. And I encourage you today, don't just spend time in prayer asking God for things. Go beyond His hands and seek His face. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him, tell him how much you adore him. Tell him how grateful you are for saving your soul. And, and tell, just, just worship him. And then Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. <laughs> you know, we just need to seek to honor God in faithfulness. He was faithful and he died for us. Hey, let's just be faithful to him and let's just follow him and try to, everything that we do, may it be glorified to him. Everything we say and do, everything, how we act and react, may he get all the glory, honor, and praise. But now we go sometimes, now, now we're going to go to this loving people thing. Just look at your family right now and say, uh-oh, it's going to get real. Amen? Because we love God and all it's all good because God's always good to us, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Then he says to love, love people. Love our neighbors as ourselves. And that's hard. Why? Because all people ain't good to me. <laughs> everybody that you have in your circle of influence, not everybody's good to you. But guess what? We're, we're called to love them just like the Lord loved us. Do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. We're called to love people as ourselves. How would we want to be loved? That's how we're supposed to love one another. This reminds me of Matthew chapter, chapter 25. And I just want to read these verses of scripture because at one time, some point in time in, in, in the future, this is all going to play out. This is Jesus showing us into the future what's going to take place one day. It says in Matthew 25 verse 31, it says, But when the Son of Man cometh in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne. And the nations will be gathered in his presence, and he will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come you who are blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink, 
or a stranger and show you hospitality or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I'll tell you the truth. When you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, my, my brethren and sisters, you were doing it to me. Right now, we're all in the same storm. Right now, a lot of people are, are, are not going outside because some have been told not to. Some are at risk. There might be some people in your neighborhood that might need, need help with getting groceries or something. I'm just saying, hey, we can stay focused on our own problems and our own worries and concerns, or we can love God and love people the way Jesus told us to. And that's to stop thinking about ourselves so much and start thinking, how can I help my neighbor? How can I help somebody who maybe does not have food? Hey, listen, we all, let's get real. The economy, we know what's going on. It's time for us to come together and help one another and not... Be selfish and go in the grocery stores and buy 12 bags of toilet paper and, and go and buy 14 jugs of milk and hoard a bunch of stuff. No, let's look out for one another. Hey, man, come on. I know you're laughing right now because all of you have been to the grocery stores and seen the toilet paper aisle. Just go ahead and laugh. But my point is, let's stop thinking about ourselves so much and think about these that, that can't get to the grocery stores. Now what do what some of our neighbors who are at high risk and they need toilet paper? I'm saying let's love one another as we would want people to love us. Amen? Now that's a foundation right there that will get you through the storms of life because it keeps you focused. 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 All right, let's put this corner back to our foundation. We're going to go to, I'm going to go to number three. Number three, number three, number three. This is one of my favorites right here. All right, because this, this sees me through storms when I think about you know, the things that we go through and stuff. This is this is a good one. All right. So hold on. Hold on. All right. This world's not my home. If you're saved today, you have an eternal home waiting for you. If you're saved today, guess what? You, you have eternity, eternal life dwelling within you. This world's not my home. It's not your home if you're safe today. There's a powerful scripture found in John 16, 33. It says, Jesus is speaking here. He says, these things I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In Jesus you'll find peace. In a relationship with Jesus you can have peace. Why? He says, in this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus has overcome this world, this world principles and systems and all that this world says you have to do to be accepted by this world. No, Jesus overcame all of that. He overcame death. He offers you eternal life. This world's not my home. So when this world is falling apart and the storms of life are coming in, the foundation that I stand on is, hey, my Savior has overcome the world. Amen. I love it because He's so real with us. He tells us exactly what we're going to find in this world. He said, in this world you will have tribulation. He even goes so far to say, if you follow Him, you'll suffer persecution. People in this world are going to hate you. But that's all right. This world's not my home. <laughs> I have eternal life dwelling on the inside of me. And whatever storm may brew in this whole world, I'm only here for a little while. Oh, I'm passing through because I'm on my way to heaven. I'm, I've got an eternal dwelling place. And all the sufferings of this present time, I reckon the sufferings of this old world are not worthy to be compared with my eternal home and the glory that shall be revealed in us. Amen, amen. Go ahead and high five your family again right there because this is, this is powerful truth if you know Christ. This world is not your home if you're a child of God. And this old world does not dictate how you're to act and react. We have a, a truth that we can stand on in the midst of these storms that says, hey, I have hope. Even though the world says, oh, we're all doomed. No, I have a living hope today. His name's Jesus. I have eternal life dwelling inside of me today. I'm not of this.
this world. This is not my home. I have an eternal home waiting on me. Amen, amen. Now that's a truth that will see you through any storm this old world will throw at you. Now let's go to the last, the last corner here of our foundation. We're talking about foundational truths that will see us through the storms of life. You ready for this one? Last but not least, here we go. Watch, be ready. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 42 through 44, he says, Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known at what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would have not suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready. For in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man is coming. We are living under a promise right now that Jesus gave us. He said that he's going to go and prepare a place for all those who put their trust in him. He says, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to send my comforter, the Holy Spirit, to come fill your hearts. And he'll help you and he'll see you through the world until I come back again. Jesus said he was coming back to receive his church, his children, to be where he is. But you know what? The truth is we could die at any moment. And then, then what? We're standing before God. That's what happened. So we, we're not guaranteed of any day. So how should we be living? I love what he says. The analogy is, if somebody knew, knew that they were going to have their house broken in, if, if you knew there was credible evidence that somebody was coming to break into your house today, this evening, whenever, you don't know that they're coming, and you know they're coming, what would you be doing? How would you act? Man, you'd be watching the doors. You'd be looking around and you'd be, you'd be ready for them. You'd be watching, geared up, not letting anybody break into your house to harm your family or to, to hurt you or to take, steal anything. No, you'd be watching. You'd be ready on guard at all the time because you knew they were coming. And Jesus said that's the same way you should be looking for him. And not just for his return, but, but daily because we don't know. Times are uncertain. You don't know you have tomorrow. And what's so crazy about this is, is the fact that, that the storms of life, I like to think about them as being just another warning sign that, hey, I better be ready. And people better be waking up and turning their hearts to the Lord because all this stuff was prophesied. All the things that's going on in our world today, Matthew chapter 24, Mark chapter 13, Luke chapter 21. You can go to the book of Daniel. He, he, he had revelation from the Lord about what's going to take place in the end times. You can go to the book of Revelation. There's commentary after commentary. Jesus has shown us what is coming upon this world. And it's been happening for the last 2,000 years ever since he left us. So whenever these storms like the one we're going through now that's affecting the whole world happen, you know what he said? When you see these things, then lift up your heads, your redemption draws nigh. These things are just an alarm going off saying, you better be ready, you better be ready. Turn your lives to, over to the Lord. And the sad thing is there's so many people that are just going to keep on going and living life selfishly according to the principles and systems of this world. And these storms are going to rage and they won't have hope. And one of these days, you're going to take your last breath and you're going to stand before God and all he's going to have to say is, I told you before. You knew what was coming because I told you everything. My question to you right now is, are you ready? Are you ready? I'm going to have Clayton come back to the piano. And, and we're going to wrap this thing up with prayer. With that question, are you ready? Are you ready for 
for, for the Lord to return? Are you ready? Should you have something happen and you take your last breath on this earth? What, what will you say as you stand before God Almighty? Are you ready? Are you saved? Are your sins forgiven? Because He's offered the greatest gift. And it's called salvation. There's one requirement to get into heaven. It's called righteousness. The Bible says none is righteous. No, not one. It goes as far as says that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. You can check your, yourself out by looking at the Ten Commandments. That was God's standard of righteousness. Go ahead and look at them sometime. Have you always put God first? The first commandment destroys us all. To love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Thou shalt have no other gods besides me, he said. Go on down to nine. Thou shalt not lie. Number seven is thou shalt not commit adultery. Jesus said if you look upon a woman, the lust after them, you've committed adultery with them already in your heart. I'm just saying, you just be honest with yourself because this is real. The storms are real. And he already told us that was going to be a sign before he returns. But I'm just saying today, today's the day of salvation because you don't know you have tomorrow. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Here's the good news. Maybe you're watching today and you admit, hey, you know, I, <laughs> I look at those Ten Commandments, yeah, I'm guilty. But who can keep those commandments? Nobody can. And God knew that. You know what He did? John 3.16 says what He did. For God so loved the world that He gave His only to begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus come to this earth, and He was perfect. He satisfied that law, the Ten Commandments. He was righteous, the only one to ever walk the face of the earth to fulfill God's standard of righteousness. Jesus did it. And yet we find Him suffering and dying on a cross. Why? He was paying your sin debt. He was paying my sin debt. He was dying in our place. That's how much He loves us. And now, He, he rose from the dead. And now He says, Come unto me, all ye who, who need salvation. I'll, I'll give you salvation. And he said, Whosoever shall call upon His name shall be saved. Today, right now, this quick, you can say, Jesus, I believe. I believe you died on the cross for me, for my sin. I'm a sinner. I need your forgiveness, Jesus. Will you be my Savior at that moment? Guess what? You are saved. You become a child of God. Eternal life comes and fills your life. This world is not your home. You have a heavenly dwelling place. Yes, salvation is that easy. He gives you His righteousness for your filthy rags, my filthy rags. He gives us His righteousness. And now we're able to get into heaven because of what Jesus did. This is a foundation that will get you through any storm. Jesus is everything. Stay focused. Just love. Love God. Love people. This world is not my home. I'm a child of God. I have eternal life dwelling within me. Though these storms rage, it's just a warning sign that, hey, Jesus, you're coming soon. So I'm watching and I'm staying ready. Let's pray. Let's pray right now. Gather your family together. And let's just pray right now. And seek the Lord. And if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, in the midst of this prayer, call out to Him. Call out to Him, and He will save your soul, and you'll become a child of God. Lord Jesus, again, it's such an honor to be in your presence again today. And Lord God, the storms of life are raging, but Lord, you have given us great peace today from your Word. You have given us great hope today from your Word. 
You have laid out the solid foundation that we can settle our lives upon, Lord God. That no matter the storm we're all going through, we have hope in you today, Jesus. You are our hope today. Lord, I pray your blessings upon each and every person and family that is represented viewing this message today. Lord, I pray your blessings of, of peace to fill their hearts and their home right now, Lord. But more than anything, Lord, if there's anybody watching this that does not know you as their Savior, Lord, I'm believing right now they're feeling your amazing presence right now. I believe tears are falling down their faces. And Lord God, they're experiencing the love of their Heavenly Father right now. And Lord, I pray, Lord God, that, that Lord, they would just call out to you. God, forgive me a sinner and be my Savior. I want eternal life today. And Lord, give them that assurance. May just your presence fill their lives right now. Fill them with your sweet spirit. May that be the stamp of approval that they are a child of yours. May they sense, Lord, your presence right now as eternal life fills their hearts. <laughs> so, Lord God, as we go on, the days, the weeks, Lord, you're in control. You are God. May we see, Lord God, people turn to you through this because, God, you've already told us this is the things that's going to be coming on this earth that we need to wake up. These were the warning signs. Lord, I pray that there would be a revival to, to go across this world. I pray for our president, Lord God, as he's, he's got the weight of the world on his shoulders, as he's making decisions, the governors, Lord, all these that are making decisions for the well-being of people, Lord, but you're in control. In the name of Jesus, we pray that you would dry up this coronavirus. Lord God, you would put a stop to the fear. That, Lord, you would destroy the anxiety and the worry and the stress that people are facing. That people would just turn to you. You are our provider. You are our protector. As we go forward, spreading the words of hope and truth. We love you. We praise you. We magnify you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. Listen, please, this week, you know, stay tuned. We're, we're, we're going to be, you know, sharing thoughts and our hearts, devotions, but we have announcements. We're going we're to send them out this way. And I want to ask you to do something for me for the Harbor of Hope Church family. If you know somebody that maybe is not a Facebooker, we might have some that don't even use the internet. If somebody comes to your mind, will you please call them? If you see an announcement on Facebook, please share that with them. All right? Thank you. We love you all. Hey, if you accepted Christ because of this today, let us know. Give us a shout. We just we want to pray with you, welcome you into the family of God. God bless you.